insecurity in Nigeria is continuously being aggravated by various factors, including communal conflicts and most recently the COVID-19 pandemic. The presence of militant groups like Boko Haram, in addition to violent clashes between herders and farmers, has further compounded the problem. The country's food insecurity and resulting malnutrition can also be attributed to poor funding for sustainable policies, limited mechanized farming, poor rural development, and prohibitive practices that disenfranchise farmers. As a result, a series of dialogue has been held to find lasting solutions to these problems. Speaking at a consolidatory dialogue for the United Nations Food Summit in Abuja, Nigeria's Vice President Professor Yemi Osibajo said a prolific and sustainable food system is critical to Professor Professor Oshibajo, who is also the chairman of the National Council on Nutrition, said the federal government's commitment of sustainable food system is one of the key strategies for eliminating poverty across Nigeria. The point of these dialogues is to effectively articulate feasible pathways to sustainable, resilient, and equitable food systems for Nigeria and indeed the world as we work towards realizing the vision of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. You may recall that during the inception national dialogue, I and so many others emphasized the need to make these dialogues on food systems as reflective of our situations, especially our socioeconomic circumstances, as possible. So what does this mean for Nigeria? We are faced with a population growth that exceeds our growth figures handsomely. Poverty, especially in the wake of the fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic, has dipped. And it is clear that the economic circumstances have made a significant difference on poverty levels. Malnutrition and unhealthy dietary practices have created unique threats to health and productivity for a very large segment of our population. A very huge number of children are undernourished, as we've heard, stunted and wasted. Malnutrition and food insecurity make it much harder for children to learn and to gain the skills and knowledge that is needed to succeed in the workplace. It also increases the risk of developing chronic illnesses such as diabetes, heart diseases, etc. And we've heard uh, from, uh, from, from uh, the presentation on the results uh, from Dr. Kola Banigo about what all of these implications are. And I'm sure that the details of that will reveal to us that all of these problems are expensive for families, expensive for businesses, and expensive for governments to manage. So there's no question at all that a prolific and sustainable food system is critical to our nation's human capital development. The Honorable Minister of Finance, Zain Abamad, on a part said the dialogue was carried out to find lasting solution to lingering challenges of Nigerian food system, which she says is an associated form of malnutrition. With these dialogues, you will agree with me that the journey has been a tedious one, but with our collective resolve to succeed, we were able to come this far. These dialogues were carried out to find lasting solutions to lingering challenges of our food systems and associated forms of malnutrition. Indeed, through these engagements, we have been able to identify some challenges that are interested to our food systems from multiple perspectives. We have also equally been able to harvest some promising ideas innovative solutions and approaches for that from diverse stakeholders. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the food systems encompass the entire food production from processing, supply chain, food environment, as well as consumer behavior. We have also recognized the need to make our food systems attractive to our teeming population, especially to the youth of this country. For this reason, the government is deploying is committed to deploy up-to-date technology in the agricultural production and in the entire value chain of the agricultural system. Access of self and healthy nutrition is a global challenge, according to Nasara State Governor, Engineer Abdullah Isule. He said there is need for Nigeria to have a sustainable partnership if success must be achieved in food system transformation. Access 
of safe and healthy nutrition is actually a global challenge. And I'm happy that we are stakeholders in trying to see how to confront this major challenge. The United Nations has clearly identified this as a major challenge and included it in the 17 goals of the SDG. Today, Nigerian children are among the worst challenge when it comes to issues concerning nutrition, and this is lack to this is lack of embedded food education, <coughs> insufficient awareness, lack of incentives to encourage investment, lack of food initiatives, and the rest of that. I'm happy with the comments actually being made by Mrs. Idou when she mentioned about the value chain that we are missing, especially here in Nigeria. Indeed, national food system transformation is just beyond agriculture. Because when you talk about the value chains, you will see a lot of economic and other benefits, especially when it comes to food security. There is need, indeed, also for us to have sustainable partnerships if we want to be able to achieve success when it comes to food system transformation. A very good example, actually, of the value chain which she has mentioned is the area of, say, sugarcane agriculture today in Nigeria. Nigeria today consumes roughly about 1.4 million metric tons of sugar, and 99% of this sugar is imported into the country from Brazil, and currently, Nigeria spends nothing less than $700 million on the importation mostly because we don't have the value chain. A good example is if we have the opportunity to be able to achieve this value chain, Nigeria today, having this quantity, will be able to have easily employed nothing less than 200,000 people to be able to produce this 1.4 million metric tons of sugar if we are able to do that. In addition to that, Nigeria will be able to utilize most of our arable, arable land that we are not utilizing at the moment. In addition, we will be producing nothing less than 5 million, 5 million monthly of ethanol that we have to do. Today, Nigeria is actually importing petroleum products, for instance, you know, at nothing less than 258 naira per liter, and we are subsidizing and selling that at somewhere around 140, 160. Nigeria consumes roughly about 60, 60 million liters of gasoline daily. And multiply that actually by the total amount that we are subsidizing, you will see the amount of losses we are having. All these are as a result of lacking the value chain that we are talking about. As the federal government continues to find lasting solutions to the food system in Nigeria, it is expected that the current food system insecurity through the farmer heathers crisis and other banditry activities be critically looked into for success to be achieved.